rusty wheel and knew I'd take her home. I brought her to my farm in an Amish neighborhood where simple living's valued. She'd be loved and understood. I put her on a treadle stand and coaxed her wheel to turn. I felt her joy and easing with my study and concern. I cleaned her and I owed her, showed her off to all my friends, repaired the hurts of years of years, and let her sew again. get started on that 66 but I wanted to show you it is officially fall out here the weather is cooler and I'm so happy that now I don't sweat in my shop it's my favorite time of year so let's go in and get started taking that machine apart okay welcome I want to introduce you to this little 66 I have not checked exactly when she was made I'm guessing late 40s I'm guessing uh, she's going to get a complete remake. She is electric, but, um, you know, we've got a lot of issues here that are just not electrically good. I picked her up at a yard sale in the middle of a ramshackle barn in the middle of nowhere, as I do. And the guy was like, oh, no, this is from my, from my neighbor. She just sewed on it last month. Look, this thing is completely, well, not completely, but she is tight. She is not sewing anything anywhere. I can barely turn this wheel. Um, she's got the old motor. I'm going to redo all of this um, and I'm going to make her light and beautiful. I have an idea of what I'm going to do with her for her, her paint. I am painting her. She is a Godzilla. Uh, let me see if I can get a little bit extra light here. Okay. She is a Godzilla. And I'm saying she because she is going to be, you know, more feminine colored when I'm done. But that Godzilla does have a texture to it. Um, I'm not going to be... At this point, you know, I'm not too sure what I'm going to do with her, actually. I know the paint that I want, but I'm not sure if I'm going to try to strip the Godzilla or just overpaint it. Because I have overpainted a Godzilla finish before, and it went very well. Um... And so I'm thinking I might just do that again, but with a whole bunch of preliminary prep. But before I can even get there, I need to disassemble her. So let me put the camera up on the overhead stand and we'll get ready. So like always, I'm getting my little can to put her in. I've got a bunch of Ziploc bags to put parts in. Try and get things out of my way. I'm going to pull off everything electric first, so that's going to involve the motor and the light. Um, uh, these old 66 Godzillas do have a very simple bobbin winding system, so that's always fun. Okay, I'm going to start with just tip her up this way. I'm going to start by uh, loosening up this little screw here and try to take off the hand what do they even call it? Stop motion knob? I'm going to take off this knob. And uh, there's a lot of rust on the presser bar and needle bar. I have not even opened up the front plate to see what it looks like in there yet. We're just going to be surprised. Okay, I've got my little three-sided washer. And this belt is very brittle. I need to change my bit so I can loosen up this larger screw here. Alright, that's going to allow hopefully this to come up. This is already at its lowest point and it's stuck. It, I think the rest is just kind of stuck this bracket to the machine so I just want to kind of wiggle it off there. Okay, so now I can take my old belt Thank you for your service off um, this wire here. It's got one of these type of connectors that we'll deal with later. Um, that is connected to the light fixture here. Just going to set it up right, right there so I don't need to grab it. Pulling off the wheel and I'm going to put the wheel in my tub of things 
that need to be cleaned. And I'm going to put, because the wheel is going to be painted and these are not, I try to keep all of the things that need to be painted separate, okay? And so I need to put gloves on. That's what I'm going to do next. Everything that I take off, I keep all the little components to that system together in a separate little baggie so that when it's time to clean them, I can clean them all together as one big unit and then I can put them back together as one big unit. And I find that I don't lose screws as easily that way, you know, sometimes they fall on the floor. But I wanted to show you, I got this stuff, it's... Um, the rubber kind of things that you put um, in drawers of toolboxes or underneath rugs to uh, keep the rugs from slipping, you know? And I put that on my table, and my hope, we'll see if it works, but my hope is that if a little screw drops off, it's going to be more apt to want to stay on the table, maybe even fall into one of my little nubby grooves here, rather than just roll off onto my concrete floor. Somewhere in here where I have to go then crawl around on the floor for an hour with my flashlight looking for it because that's no fun. So anyhow, I got that off. I'm going to go ahead and take off this thumb screw here for this back plate. Okay, and put it into its own little bag because it's underneath that back plate should be the bracket for the light fixture. And it is, if I turn her this way, can you see? All right, right here is a very, very dirty little screw. And I'm getting my first look inside and everything is rusted inside there. And when I see that much rust inside, it's making me think that I want to put her in my electrolysis tank. And my electrolysis tank, you know, you. It's great for iron things, okay? It's not good for aluminum, it's not good for things like that, but for iron things, it, in addition to getting rid of paint, it also will loosen up rust at the same time. And if you're dealing with a part in here that I'm not gonna be able to pull out, and I'm, I don't pull out the main shaft, I'm not pulling out this vertical shaft because you have to pull out the main shaft to pull out the vertical shaft, and we just don't go there, you know? Um, I think that I will be putting her in my electrolysis tank, which means this will be a good experiment to see how the Godzilla strips off. So, you know, we will learn together. And I can see underneath here, she's very rusty down here. A lot of times they're just, um, dirty, but she's not just dirty, she is rusty. So we're gonna be doing a lot of rust removal here. So let me go ahead and get all of this organized in my box so I know where everything is and I'll be right back. I wanted to show you before I do that, um, I'm not gonna reuse this foot pedal. It's, it's got issues. Um, I just don't feel safe with that. So, and I am obviously not reusing this power cord. So to make my life easier at this point, I am just going to cut off this foot pedal, okay, so I don't have to keep dealing with it in my box and put it aside in the artifacts section of my room here. I'm just going to put the little mounting screw. I think I dropped the little washer in here little mounting screw and washer for the motor. I'm just going to pop that into its own little baggie and set it in here. Um, I have the motor and the light and everything over where I'm going to be doing, keeping my painting things. And over here, I'm going to go ahead and take this belt guard off because it will get painted also. Flip my bit again. And I'm just going to leave the little bobbin winder attached to it right now um, because it's, it's a little painted piece also. Okay, obviously it needs a new tire. We're just going to pull that off right now. Oh my gosh, I think I left my... I emptied my trash can earlier. I think I left it in the um, 
house. Okay, so with this, you know, I'm going to put that to be painted, but what I'm going to do, because this is a random screw, um, and I don't want to, to misplace it, so I'm going to keep this random screw with this little wheel, even though I'm getting rid of the wheel shortly, just to remind me of the location that this little screw goes in, okay? Because if I just put that tiny screw in a bag, it looks like so many others in the machine that that could be confusing to me later. I'm going to pull this little dirty felt off. Okay, there's a lot of rust here. Wow. All right, let's flip her up and see what she looks like underneath here. So I'm going to take off a little screw plate. Well, that's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. There's some rust in there, but it's not nearly as bad as everything that's exposed. I'm thinking that the little faceplate kind of kept it protected in some way from dampness or something. I have a feeling it was in that damp barn a whole lot longer than that guy was saying. Okay, now I'm going to try to disassemble some of this. And look, I got my non-marring pliers so I can hopefully just grab this wheel and start turning and not have to worry about possibly damaging it. So yay. Bob Fowler mentioned these and Jen mentioned them and that's how he found them. So you know we're all one big bizarrely dysfunctional happy family out there. You know. Okay. So let me just finish unscrewing this and then I'm going to work on taking off this little screw okay, that is holding this little angled piece here and this little screw that is holding onto that block. Okay, I just was going to start unscrewing things in here and I can tell it's, gonna, it's not going to come out easy. So I'm just going to spray a whole bunch of penetrating oil in here and just let it sit for a while because the last thing I want to do is possibly strip a screw or something because that's no fun. Um, one of the reasons I set my machines in this little plastic like TV tray kind of thing is because when I'm spraying all over the place and stuff drips, at least it's contained in this little tray, you know. Um, but look, I can pull the spring out through the top, so that's good. It does have its little washer. And I can tell that um, this screw is good. The last 66 I did, um, that screw was stripped out. And uh, I think that that is because that screw is reverse threaded, so it's a lot easy for that to happen, I suppose. I can also tell that this does have a little gauge with timing marks on it that some of my other 66s have not had, so that's fun. So let me just leave this here to marinate for a little minute. I'm going to pull this needle out because it looks like tetanus. No, I'm not. I'm going to wait for the penetrating oil to loosen up this clamp, and then I'm going to pull the needle out. So give me a minute. I'm going to run down to the house, get my trash can, and I will be right back. Alrighty, I am back pulling the little screws out. I have that little bracket taken off. Uh, we will see. Okay, this block was not rusted to it, so that's a good sign. Alright, let me see if I can take off this rusty needle clamp here so I can pull out that needle because I don't want to get my fingers in there. Looks like I just needed to break it again using my non-marring pliers on that. Very happy with that new find. Okay, so this needle is going away. We just don't need that kind of stuff up here. I'll put a new needle in when she's done and I'm gonna start a baggie over here for needle bar things. All right, so now I'm gonna very happy with the way this turns. She has an extremely rusty tetanus filled um, thread cutter, you know. All right, loosening up this little thumb screw here so I can pull off her foot. It is a solid foot, it's not a hinged foot. You can always put a hinged foot on if you want. 
So they go back in the baggie, and I gotta see about getting off the thread cutter. So give me a second. I'm just gonna try to tap it off. Don't like touching them. All right, she is off. I'll be cleaning up this little, you know, rusty blade here. And now hopefully I should be able to pull this all the way through the top. And this block will come loose. There you go. Now this block is loose and I can pull it out. Okay, so I have this, this, and that is about it for the uh, presser bar components. So I can get them all safely put up, zipped together in their little baggie. And while I'm over here, I'm going to go ahead and take off the uh, little lifter lever. It's just a screw into the casting. <clears throat> okay. Pulling these out. These Godzilla machines, they always look so tough, but, you know, they're fabulous. So, you know, it's grungy, but it's not terribly rusted. So that's a good thing. We're going to give her her own baggie. And now I'm going to start with the needle bar. Um, all right. How am I going to approach this? When I was dealing with that 66 that had the strip screw, what I did is instead of, you know, taking off these pieces one at a time, I just took off the whole component and lifted it out. And that actually worked a lot better for me. Um, if I can turn this thing without the wheel, it's very stiff. I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. So what I need to do is come in here. See this hole back here? Let me put a light back there so you can. Okay, there is a hole right here in the back that the light is shining through, okay? I need to lower, turn the wheel and lower this so it's at its lowest point. And at its lowest point, I should be able to get a screwdriver. And I usually have to use, it can't be a Chapman screwdriver because these things just don't fit in that hole. Okay, so I just use one of these guys, put it up through there, and it reaches a screw in the back of this little arm here. And if I can unscrew that, then I'll be able to release the needle bar. And then I'll be able to take this whole piece out as one unit. That's my goal right now. Okay, it's coming out loose. And I have to tell you, I'm kind of excited because I bought a new camera and special stand with the ring light and everything and that should be delivered today. I have the camera I'm using right now is the one I use for my other channel which is better for my indoors and uh, you know I need to tap this out. And so I'm hoping to keep a separate camera for out here. Okay so we'll see how it goes. I'm just going to try to tap that little needle bar through there. Give me a second. Got a very angry cat yelling at my door. Okay, so I got it pushed down just a hair. I need to tap it the rest of the way. I'm just gonna put a little brass punchy tap kind of thing up here. Let's see if I can just do some light tappity tapping to get it pressed down enough that I can pull it out of that clamp. I think I'm getting close. Am I? Almost there. A little more. A little more. Okay. So now I can turn the wheel and this part is coming up here without the needle bar. Here's the needle bar down here. So let me see if I can just move things out of the way and pull it out. Okay. Thankfully, I can pull it out without pulling this little cap off. I'm gonna, I haven't decided what I'm going to do with that little cap. I need to pop it out if I'm going to be stripping and repainting, though. So here is my little needle bar that's going to go in this baggie. And... 
always have trouble with this piece here. Well, you know what, while I'm thinking about that, I'm going to go ahead and grab and pull off the little timing. This is, this is part of the timing system, this little nub up here. It will adjust based on the little lines on this clamp, you know, to set your timing. So I'm going to put that in my needle bar bag. <sighs> I need to get to the back side of this to be able to un undo a screw to take this little thread guide off. I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and try to take this whole little mechanism off here. Okay, I've got my machine turned over on its side, and there's a hole right here. I just rotated it until I can see a flathead screw through that hole. All right, now I'm going to see if I can get this screwdriver in there and loosen it up. If not, I think I'm going to need to use this guy. Oh, dear. I forgot about that. Okay. I forgot that with these things, it's going to want to turn. So I'm going to grab my trusty handle. I use this handle so much. And wedge it over here on this side of the cog so that it can't rotate while I'm trying to push. Because the screwdriver is coming in from this side to unscrew that. I'll have a, a, secure, a secure piece that I'm putting pressure up against. She said she did not want to release that nut, so I'm using a little heat, heating it up, heating it up, and now I'm going to put some oil around that screw, and hopefully the heat will suck that oil in. Give it a second and give it another try. And that worked. I cracked it, so I am good. I am good. It's amazing what a little heat and some oil will do. All right, so I've got that screw. I'm going to pull it all the way out. No, I'm not. I'm just leaving it a majority unthreaded. I'm going to go ahead and pull this out right now because I don't want to lose it. And pop it in here. My little needle bar accessories bag. Okay, now I also need to be able to take this screw out here. So let me once more change the bit on my chapman here to something a little bit more robust. I'm thinking this will match it. And see if I can get it undone. She says no. Okay, let me do the heat, you know, everything like that so I can get this undone. Okay, so between the heat, the oil, adding the little ranchety handle onto the Craftsman gives you a lot more leverage. It is now loose. And oh, I'm going to go ahead and pull that one out all the way. So there it is. Pop that there for a second. Now let's see if I can just wiggle this free. Um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and pull this little screw out the rest of the way just to make sure that there is no residual pressure being put on this little pin here. Okay. So this is the little screw that was inside this little cam piece. So now I just need to wiggle it out. So just give me a minute. I'm going to rotate and wiggle and rotate and wiggle until I can get this out of here. Okay, wiggling, wiggling. It is coming. It is coming. It's just, there it goes. All right. So this is the pin that was inside the hole here. And you can see on the pin, the flat part, that is where that little set screw goes up against, okay? So, I'm gonna let that over there to cool down because all that heat, it's still a little bit warm before I put it into a baggie because we don't want it to melt. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take out this little, 
this little part here. That is the UY shaped wrong screwdriver Thank you for your service. Um, this is the little piece that applies pressure or releases pressure from the tension mechanism when you lift up the presser bar. It'll come over like that. I don't think it's working right now because I don't even see this pin retracting. It's probably, you know, just locked up. Hang on. Okay. I highly recommend the screwdriver with the little ratchety handle for tight screws. Really, really, really helps get them broke so that they can start to untwist. Anyhow, let me get this off and the little spring that's attached to it over here. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Little screw sitting there. Little spring on there. It's very dirty. Goes in its own little baggie to be cleaned. And while I'm over here, I'm going to go ahead and deal with the tension mechanism. Can you see that I'm ignoring this? I am still ignoring that. This one might be different, but every other machine, this piece is giving me trouble. So anyhow, these pieces are cool enough to go in their baggie, keeping everything organized so I don't lose it. All right, over here, let's see here. There is a screw. The pin for the tension just came out, so we know it wasn't rusted in place, so I guess that's a good thing. All right. On the side right here, there is a little screw hole. I need to get a fairly small bit in there and release that. Here. I did not spray any penetrating oil in there, so I hope I can turn her up. It's being awkward. Okay, so this is the little tiny screw that was holding the whole can in, and now once that is out, you can pull the whole thing out of the casting, and it's in its own little container here. This little hole in the back is where this pin goes in and out, okay. I'm gonna leave it completely assembled in its little baggie, and when it comes time to take it apart and clean it, I will do it at that point and then reassemble it, but right now I, I don't wanna pull it apart. Okay, you know, we have a couple of little ornamental things I'm gonna pull off down here in the front. There's a little bracket that the thread goes through when you're winding a bobbin. I'm going to go ahead and pull that little piece off and put it away. All right, so while I have her upright like this and I'm sitting in front of her, I'm taking off the thread guide. And I need to put this in with all of the needle bar stuff. Looks like this, and there is a little screw, and this little screw screws into this little tube that's into the casting, so okay. I'm going to keep it separate, because if I can get this little tube out, I'm going to keep the thread guide with it. I say if. I'm going to tip it up. There is a screw here, right here, that I need to loosen up. In theory, if I loosen that screw, I should be able to wiggle out that pipe. We will see. I'm not too sure if it's going to come out. I don't want to say I'm quitting too early, but I've just been through this rodeo before, and I have tapped it. I have grabbed it with the pliers that don't leave marks. I've grabbed it with the pliers that do leave marks. I've tried to wiggle, tried to tap, and it's not budging. And what I've done before is just mask it off and paint around it, and it has turned out completely fine. And if I can't get this out when I'm totally stripping it to repaint it, nobody else should ever need to either. So I'm going to put that little screw back in just so I don't lose it um, and leave it in place while I am doing her makeover because I don't know why. I don't know why that's always such a problem. It just, it just is. Um, someday I will conquer it, but not to this day. 
So I am going to go ahead and pull this little thread guide right here. Let me see if I can grab it and pull it out. Yes, I did. It just sticks in the hole, you know. So I'm going to stick it in its own little baggie. Actually, no. I'm going to put it with this thread guide. Have both tiny little thread guides together. That makes sense to me. I hope it makes sense to you. Okay. Um, I've got a lot of stuff underneath. I did spray it also with penetrating oil. So I'm hoping that's making some kind of an impact. I could see this whole race was really rusty, but now that it's been saturated, it looks a little bit better. I'm going to go ahead and see about getting these plates off the top, which does not want to move right now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and unscrew the two screws of this little half circle one first that's over the feed dogs. Okay. So using a very short, ratchety screwdriver, I can pull these little screws out here. This sliding plate seems a bit stuck. I'm going to put my little wooden hammer handle in there and see if I can tap it out. I don't want to tap it with metal on metal, but wood on metal will be good. Okay, so let me get a new baggie for my plates. And it's kind of a mess in there, so we're going to redo everything down there. Pull this plate off, keeping it with these screws. And before I zip it up completely, um, I am going to be putting this little blade, which holds the sliding plate in with those. But I'm going to need to start taking off the feed dogs, the bobbin case, um, the race, all of that kind of stuff too. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and flip her over and get the feed dogs out. But first, let's pull out this little bobbin, you know, so it doesn't fall out on me. All right, I'm not sure if you can see. Uh, can't wait for my new light to get here and camera and stuff. But down here, this screw right here, if you loosen up that screw, that is going to release the feed dogs. Where's my screw? Here it is. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I already have it somewhat loose off camera. I'm going to go ahead and finish up. I need to get all of this stuff out of the way. And then once I have this screw out all the way, then I should be able to just pull them all the way out. So, okay, so here is my little screw. You can see, pop it in there. Turn this over here. And let's see if I can get the feed dogs out. Yes. All right, so here the little grimy guys are. Okay, I'm going to place those with the little screw that it belongs to in its own little bag. Like so. All right. I'm trying to figure out a way to show you this. Down below here. Okay. All right. Down below here, hopefully you can see, see this little round part here? That is the very bottom of the shaft that the whole bobbin race, everything is attached to, okay? There is a screw right over here on the side that's kind of like clamping it this over it. I'm going to loosen up this screw here so that hopefully I'll be able to pull the whole little bobbin race and everything straight out. Okay, I got that out, and before I try to pull everything out, there's another tiny screw that is set in. Here, let me tip this up and show you what I'm working here. Right here, that is part of the whole positioning screw system to hold the little bob bobbin, what do they call it? I don't know. Bob, you know the real words. I don't know the real words. Anyway, that is out now. I just took it all the way out completely. And I am thinking at this point, I should be able to go ahead and just tap this out from the bottom. So let me place her again up on a little board and get a little punch to put in the middle of that shaft and try to tap her out. 
and she is coming out quite freely now, so that's good. Oops, and there she goes. Okay, so here we go. I've got bobbin positioning bracket, the screw of death, and all of that. I've got this little case here. I've got the race. It's all filthy. It's, huh, the felt is surprisingly flexible. Wouldn't that be something? Okay. Um, so let me go ahead and get all of this secured. And then I think while I'm working down here below, I'm going to go ahead and get started disassembling some of this bottom end. Okay, so I'm back here at my table, and I want to show you something. I got my new light in the mail. Check it out. I am really hopeful that this is going to help. And... Um, the only bad part is I'm kind of locked into using this table and that's bad because the next step that I have to do is down here and I don't have a good way on this table to keep the machine upright. So I think what I'm going to have to do is just show you what I'm going to do, tip it down so it won't fall over, and then do the next step. So the next thing I'm going to do is work on this shaft here. There is a nut right here, and I actually did just loosen it up. I think it's a 3 8 inch nut. So I'm going to pull that off. Once this nut is off and it does not fall in the cavity, I'm going to unscrew this screw over here. It should kind of pop out, but you know, I think I need a different bit almost. I'm just pushing it with my thumb to try to push it through here. So let me get this pulled off. Don't even see that. Okay, so let me get this pulled off so that these pieces can separate. All right, so that is out. So this is separate. This is the fork, the bottom end of the fork that's way up here, you know. There you go, now you can see it. Sorry for the jiggle. So now um, it's about the same type of thing up here with these pivot screws. I'm going to unscrew this little screw right here and this one right here. Oopsie. So that I can release this whole rock shaft. All right, so, <clears throat> excuse me, as soon as these, you know, pivots come out, and those are actually a lot cleaner than I was expecting, you know. As soon as those come out, this entire rock shaft comes out. Um, it is very filthy, but it's not rusted in place. It's amazing, just that little bit of um, penetrating oil that I sprayed on here earlier really, really helped to, to loosen a few things up. So I'm going to go ahead and put all of these little nuts and pivot points into a, a little baggie, and we're going to go on to the next step. Trying some new camera angles here with my stand. I want to show you up at the top. I'm coming back down here. I'm going to be taking off this screw, or at least I'm going to attempt to do that. So I've got my screwdriver with the ratchet on. I haven't even tried it yet. Hey, that popped off actually pretty, pretty easy. All right, let me finish unscrewing this. I mean, that should release this lifter lever here. Okay, so now, here we go. Let's get the little bearing right there. This is the screw I just undid. I'm going to put this whole thing in its own little baggie. This, oh, that is tight. I don't know what the deal is with this part here. I decided I'm going to go ahead and take this dog bone piece off right now. Uh, the other, this, that just fits on there, it just popped out. This is, this little pin area just pops in and that came out very easily, so I'm thankful for that. Okay, so it was like, so, you know, they can tell they are somewhat rusty, somewhat, <laughs> so I'm gonna clean those up. Okay, and I'm gonna try to work on getting this um, screw out here in an attempt to get this bar out. It's still very tight down here at the base, but we will figure that out when we get to it. But first, this one. And I need to, again, lay my machine down because trying to do this while holding the machine upright is a little tough. But there we go. There's that screw. 
Does this come off? Kind of, sort of. All right, now let me work on the other end. And I need to try to get this off. And uh, I gave it a couple quick tries with the screwdriver and it was so stuck. I have heated it, I have added my oil and I'm just wiping off some of the oil so I can get a good grip on here. Um, I'm gonna try to grab it with pliers. It's the same righty tidy lefty loosey type of a place here. That doesn't want to come. Let me get another screwdriver with a ratchet on it. See if I can get that. Mm. Give me a minute. I'm gonna work on this for a while. Okay, I got it off. This was a pain. This was a serious pain. It was a lot of heat, a lot of oil, a lot of heat, a lot of leverage. Uh, phone call to Bob Fowler. Thank you, Bob. Um, just ending up using a whole lot of heat and penetrating oil both from the top, from the bottom, heat from the top, from the bottom. Big ass, sorry, big old uh, screwdriver with a big long pliers attached to it that I could work it and it finally came off so there you go I'm gonna just put this whole thing together into a bag and you know what I think I might call it a day for this for right now I'm just gonna celebrate and end on a high note with this out and I will see you tomorrow good morning it is the next morning and I am ready to get back to work on her now I think the only thing I'm really still need to take apart is the whole stitch length mechanism, arm, fork, everything like that. But I can tell that if I kind of wiggle the arm, I'm like touching it down here, wiggling it around, that that does kind of release the wheel. So I think that it has to do with where this arm is in contact with that rusty area up here that was really doing a lot of the binding on this machine, that plus stuff up in the nose. So I have a lot of hopes that this is going to turn out well. So um, the first thing I'm actually going to do, I have this up on its end, but I'm going to turn it this way, is pull off this cute little plate here. It's just a couple screws. Um, and then I can lift off and turn and release this little indicator plate. I want to show you when I came in this morning, in my little tray, there was one tiny little screw that at some point yesterday I missed putting in a baggie. So this is what I do. I stick it on a magnet. I have a whole bunch of these little magnets on my table and I just stick it on a magnet so I don't lose it. Stick it in its own little baggie. I'm gonna put it in a special clear one here so I know it's, you know, it's different. And then as I'm putting things apart, there will come a point where there's something missing and then I know this is it, so. Everything will be accounted for, but for right now, it's just not. You know, these things happen. Okay, so now that that little indicator plate's off, let me flip her back up. And if you can see, I've got oil and stuff all over. And I've already wiped up my little tray a few times. So always good to have that. Now right here, I'm going to loosen up this mold first. Uh, it's actually, it's kind of underneath this bushing. I don't like that, but you know, it is what it is. But let me see if I can get in there and loosen that up. All right, I got it actually loosened up fairly easily. Here it is. It has its little three-pronged washer. So now, hopefully, I can release this little part. It's a block, and I need to turn it so that the little lever will go through. Uh, let me flip the machine down because it is rolling around in there somewhere. Come on. There you go. This is what it looks like. I am going to be stripping the paint off of this little area here too that's just painted down at the bottom because when I repaint this, it's going to have a nice fresh coat on it. And I have learned the hard way that trying to paint on top of this paint, it doesn't stick very well. There's something about this paint that just, you know does not like to be repainted. So I'm gonna stick this part over with my to be painted stash. So now I should be able to pull the fork out, and I did. 
Here it is. So I'm going to keep the fork. Oops, that must have been my bearing. The fork and its bearing, you know, which obviously everything needs to be cleaned up because this is really rusty. That penetrating oil did a really good job loosening it up for me, though. So keeping all of this together. And now I'm just going to mess with that medallion. Okay, so these medallions are my nemesis here. And this is hard to get into because I know you can't see, but there is a cast piece right here that is right in line with one of the pins for the medallion. But on Bob Fowler's show last weekend, he gave links to a place where you can buy the brass pins to put these back on. So I am going to I ordered some, they should be on their way, so I am pulling it off. And what I'm doing is I'm just getting a flathead screwdriver in here, a little hammer, and a screwdriver you don't care that much about, you know, and I am shearing off the back of those pins. I know you couldn't see in there, I can barely see in there, that's why I have a flashlight shining up that way. Okay, so now, hopefully, with the ends of these pins sheared off, I should be able to just lift it. Uh, this might take a little bit of wiggling. Oh, they are coming up, okay. All right, so you can see how short that is now. All right, that's the entire thickness. That's where I've sheared it off. So the new brass pins I have coming should tap right into place. All right, so I took the medallion off. These things are so fragile. I had a little bit of a wrinkle in where I was really working on this one side. It was a lot tougher than the other. And so after I got it off, you know, ever, did you ever play with copper engravings where you like you do all of the punching and smoothing and everything from the back side? Well, I did some of that to flatten it back out, ran it through my polisher, and I think we're going to be good to go here. You know, it's lovely. It's a little bit, a little bit not completely smooth right here. But I think once it's back on the machine, it's going to be good. Um, I'm going to put this in a separate little baggie where hopefully it will be protected. And the little pins I'm going to stick in there just so I can compare the size of the posts of these to the new ones when they come in the mail. Um, but I will not be reusing those posts at this point, I don't think. So now she is as disassembled as I am going to make her, basically at this point, with my little board here. She still has her main shaft, she still has this bushing on there. She still has, boy, so heavy, these things are tanks. All of this in here, okay? because that doesn't come off if you don't take the main shaft off, and I'm not taking the main shaft off. The pin, it's pounded in, and it is very secure. It's happy there. I'm gonna let it stay there. Up here at the nose, um, there is a little cap right here. I might leave that in for right now. I might leave that in. Um, this is staying in here, okay, just because I've never been successful at getting those out yet. Someday I will, but not this day. And I need to put this little screw with the plate, the front plate, so let me pull that out. I know, large head, but it works. Um, let me pull this out, put it with the front plate, and I am gonna get this ready to set into my e-tank. Okay, if you hear that buzzing in the background, that is my e-tank. I have wrapped up the machine and her accessories that are going to be stripped and de-rusted and put them in there. Basically, I get uh, wires, um, steel, copper, whatever, anything that conducts, wrap it so that it is in contact with um, the casting of the machine, of the wheel, all of the parts that need to be stripped. It's like a mad scientist looking ball. And then I put that in the middle of my tank, connect one alligator clip to that's connected to a battery, that's connected to a charger and everything to that. Another one, two, I have diamond plate panels surrounding it. 
I have a separate video explaining my electrolysis tank. Please go look at that if you're interested. But I want to show you what is not in there is obviously the motor and this light. And this light feels like it's a plastic, like a Bakelite kind of thing. I do not want to put that in there. So I am just going to be dealing with these separately. Maybe a separate video. I haven't decided if I'm going to film that or not. Um, but I just wanted to show you this is where I am. So next video should hopefully be uh, everything that comes out of the e-tank, what it looks like, getting it cleaned up, primered, and painted and decorated. So I hope you stay tuned for that, and I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. I found an antique sewing machine, forgotten and alone. I touched her rusty wheel. And knew I'd take her home. I brought her to my farm in an Amish neighborhood where simple living's valued. She'd be loved and understood. I put her on a treadle stand and coaxed her wheel to turn. I felt her joy and easing with my study and concern. Cleaned her and I owed her, showed her off to all my friends, repaired the hurts of years of years, and let her sew again.